I'm Lisa Clark. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this webcast. If you are one of the millions of Americans diagnosed with heart disease, you can turn to your doctors for help, change your diet to help, and take prescription drugs or nutritional supplements to help. But there's one more weapon in your arsenal against heart disease, and it's all in your mind. Learning how to recognize and reduce stress is an important tool in reducing your risk of heart disease. And for the next few moments, we'll discuss ways to help you do just that. Joining us for this discussion, Nate Lebowitz, a cardiologist and assistant clinical professor at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. Welcome, Nate. Also joining us, Sam Benjamin. He's the director for the Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine at State University of New York, Stony Brook. He's also one of the founders of Mariposa, which is a natural supplement company. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. Let me ask you, I won't mention any names, but I happen to know someone, type A personality, has had some heart issues, and when you mention things like meditation or writing a journal or massage, not me, I couldn't possibly. How do you encourage your cardiac patients to have an open mind about the role that their mind can play in helping them get well? I think like in, uh, in a number of disease states and lifestyle changes, they've studied different uh, interactions uh, for, to achieve that change. And in, in study after study, smoking cessation and other things, mm -hmm. the number one modality that comes out as effective is a conversation between the physician mm -hmm. and the patient. As long as it is a trusted relationship, uh, and p perhaps a long-term relationship, but a one-on-one -on -one relationship where you're not talking down to the patient, saying these things work, mm -hmm. there's science behind it, I want you to just try it. Mm -hmm. just try. I want to ask you a little bit about some of the things that are, are mentioned. Meditation is one, journal writing, guided visual imagery. Guided visual imagery, uh, uh, probably its greatest proponents are Dr. Martin Rossman and Gene Ockerberg out in California. Uh, has, it's just another way of approaching this. It's through instruction, usually a certified instruction, and summoning up other images that might represent the disease. I had a patient who had a problem. They were diabetic with heart disease. They had chest pain. They were being treated very appropriately, yet they continued to be symptomatic. Mm -hmm. And they imaged the fact that the heart disease and diabetes were for them like a ball and chain around their chest. And when they imaged that and began to unravel the ball and chain, mm -hmm. their symptoms got substantially better while physiologically uh, there was some sign of improvement and a decreased need for drugs. Mm -hmm. Aromatherapy was also mentioned. I th think that's very intriguing. Memories of smells can oftentimes summon up uh, a certain uh, uh, immunologic responses in the body as well as relaxation states. One of the most interesting mind-body approaches in this realm has to do with prayer. And it's not necessarily the patient who needs to do the praying, but there have been some studies done about people who are prayed for, and perhaps they don't even realize they're being prayed for. Tell it, me a little bit about this. It's called intercessory prayer, mm -hmm. uh, and it, this is one of the most potentially intriguing and unknowable areas, but, but in a couple of good studies, mm -hmm. uh, patients do better. And to reiterate, the patients didn't know they were being prayed for. That's right. It seems to, it, to have been completely blinded. The patients didn't know, and yet they clearly did do better. That is an intriguing notion. And how does that make you feel as a physician to know that there are things that can't be measured, can't be tested? Well, I think if I was purely a scientist, I'd, I would be incredibly uncomfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But I chose to go into a mix of science and humanities called medicine, mm -hmm. and you have to be comfortable to some degree with uncertainty uh, because you just don't know. You have to take your best shot and combine science uh, with art with a bedside manner and try to combine the best thing that will really help the patient. So there's clearly uncertainty mm -hmm. uh, and you have to be comfortable with it to some degree. It's not easy, uh, but we clearly there are a million things we don't know uh, and you have to do your best. Well, I can't thank you enough for being with us here tonight. Nate Lebowitz and Sam Benjamin, thank you both so much for your input. And also thanks to you for joining us for this webcast. I'm Lisa Clark.